In the Bible, Enoch was one of only two men who did not experience death. He was a righteous man who lived holy in the sight of God and was obedient to his commandments, and so is quite shocking to find that the book of Enoch has been rejected by Christians, claiming that his books are not inspired by God. Ever since the original manuscript of an mysterious book of Enoch was uncovered in Ethiopian Abyssinia in 1773, the book of Enoch has piqued the interest of academics, religious experts, and other interested readers. Because there are other historical texts named after the patriarch, many refer to it as one Enoch. Also, since the sole complete copy of the book is in Ethiopia, a lot of other people call it Ethiopic Enoch. Whatever name you give the book, it is one of the most well-known texts that were rejected throughout Jewish and Christian history. The remarkable plots and characters in the Book of Enoch, such as the Watchers, have captivated the imagination of science fiction fans in the modern era, as well as conspiracy theorists who believe that Christian and conservative Judaism have incorrectly rejected its principles. But why is this book banned from the Bible? And what is so frightening about it that Christians are advised to not read it? Join us in our video today, which delves into the depths of the mysteries and shocking secrets of our history revealed in the Book of Enoch. Be sure to give the video a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. For many Christian denominations, the Book of Enoch is not acknowledged as a portion of divinely inspired scripture. This book is believed to be an apocryphal book of the Old Testament that describes events that happened before the birth and ministry of Jesus. This book has largely been rejected because of the revelation about fallen angels who had sex with humans and gave birth to a different race called the Nephilim. The original manuscript was misplaced around the end of the 4th century, but it was later found in Ethiopian Abyssinia in 1773. The Ethiopian Christian sect is the only one that includes the Book of Enoch in their scriptures. James Bruce, a Scottish explorer, brought three copies of the book back from Ethiopia to France and England. However, by the end of the 18th century, Cardinal Leonardo Antonelli's library in Rome had another copy of the Book of Enoch. Around 1825, Angelo Mai would obtain this Ethiopic manuscript for the Vatican Library, where it is believed to be still kept today. Enoch was the great-great-great-grandson of Adam, the great-grandfather of Noah, and the father of Methuselah, the longest living man. He led a holy and obedient life for the Lord and had several additional children over his many years on earth. Enoch is also just one of two humans who were taken straight to heaven, avoiding death altogether. God loved Enoch so much that he did not allow him to die like everybody else. Numerous Jewish and Christian traditions are based on Enoch, and he was also known as the Scribe of Judgment. He is regarded as the author of the Book of Enoch, and is also referenced in the Gospel of Luke, the Epistle to the Hebrews, and in the Epistle of Jude, among other New Testament writings. Revered as a saint in the Eastern Orthodox Church, Oriental Orthodoxy, and the Catholic Church, Enoch was a well-known preacher who preached God's judgment on humanity, his work served as a forerunner to that of Noah, who built the ark and also preached morality. In essence, Enoch was an impressive man. A man standing up and passing judgment on his neighbors was surprising, given the level of injustice and ungodliness in the world at the time. But now it's time to dive into the supernatural and explore the beings and mythical figures in the Book of Enoch, beginning with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Around early 1946 or late 1947, a collection of big clay containers that looked like jars was found by some young shepherds near the ancient settlement of Qumran located on the northwest shore of the Dead Sea, now known as the West Bank. These shepherds might have been playing around when they tossed a stone into an opening on the side of a cliff. After throwing the stone, they heard a shattering sound, so they ventured inside the cave and found seven jars of leather and papyrus scrolls. The collection was purchased by an antiquities merchant, 
who then sold it to several scholars, who determined the text to be older than 2,000 years. Bedouin treasure hunters and researchers discovered thousands of additional scroll fragments from surrounding caverns when news of the discovery spread. They totaled between 800 and 900 manuscripts. The Book of Enoch is divided into five books. The Book of Watchers, the Book of Parables, the Astronomical Book, the Dream Visions, and the Epistles of Enoch. The monumental works that make up the Book of Enoch briefly introduce Enoch and discuss topics such as rewards, punishment, the end of the world, and the ultimate judgment. The topics of angels, the tree of life, Jerusalem, and the universe are principally covered in chapters 6 through 36 of Book 1. The account of the fallen angels from Genesis 6 to 4 is told in the book The Watcher. Fallen angels married women, formed the Nephilim, and taught humanity superior technologies, which finally caused the Great Flood and their demise. The term Nephilim refers to the fallen one, and they are characterized as enormous creatures similar to giants. The link between the Nephilim and the sons of God has been interpreted in various ways. Some people believe that the Nephilim are the descendants that fallen angels had with human women. This idea was explained in the first book of Enoch, and it continues to be a widely accepted explanation. The Nephilim were giants, according to the first book of Enoch, and their description makes sense given their size. The reason why the Nephilim appear to be giants is because of their supernatural origin. However, some have claimed that it is theologically problematic to suggest that angels or devils, who are entirely spiritual entities, could physically procreate with humans. The Nephilim, according to the supernatural perspective, were only men who strayed from morality. Certain theologians believe that when the Bible mentions sons of God, it was talking about descendants of Seth, the righteous son of Adam and the Nephilim were members of his lineage who rejected God. This belief was called the Stithian view and was held by St. Augustine, some church fathers, and many Jewish theologians. This view was sometimes explained with the assertion that the daughters of men were the unrighteous women descended from Cain, Adam's son who killed his brother. The parables of similitude, an apocalyptic book about the Son of Man and the Ancient of Days, makes up the second section of Enoch's book. These ancient prophecies about Jesus match the Bible exactly and are surprisingly similar to the book of Revelation. The astronomical book provides a thorough description of the stars and how they work. The dream visions foretells the history of humans from the time they were created to the end times and final judgment. Here the past, present, and future are told in great detail. In the final segment, Enoch summarizes the teachings and wisdom he has gained during his life and reminds us that we are all under the control of God. The hidden account of Noah from the Bible is revealed in the Noah fragments, which also detail his father, Lamex, and grandfather Methuselah's difficulties and his mission to save all of humanity. Although each piece is independent, they are all united by the topic of the blessings of the righteous and the punishment of the wicked. Mysteries of the Book of Enoch Several references in the Book of Enoch go against what is written in the Bible. For example, verses 1 through 3 of chapter 10 mention Noah, even though the Bible says that Enoch was exalted to heaven before Noah was born. It states that the Most Holy and Great One spoke, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech, and said to him, Go to Noah, and tell him in my name hide thyself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it. This portion in the book of Enoch is confusing. If Enoch wrote the book of Enoch, how could he have known about Noah's flood? Enoch was not around during Noah's time and the Bible never says that Enoch returned to earth after being taken to heaven. Another significant inconsistency in the book of Enoch is how evil is blamed on Azazel. In the book of Enoch, God says that a demon named Azazel is responsible for all the evil on earth. 
It says that the whole world has been corrupted through the deeds of Azazel. The Bible, on the other hand, mentions Lucifer as the author of sin. Lucifer, Satan or the devil are all names given to one entity who is blamed for the presence of sin. Not that there aren't other demons, but they are never mentioned, and Satan is the one who is ultimately held responsible for the problems of our world because he is the source of sin. He that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus said in 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. Also, some verses in chapter 13 of the book of Enoch talk about how fallen angels decided to repent from their evil ways. But the Bible indicates in Matthew that the fate of Satan and his angels are sealed, and their portion is to suffer in an everlasting fire that has been prepared for them. Thus, there is nothing like repentance for Satan and the fallen angels. In addition, the book of Enoch says that demons did not have any contact with God after they followed Lucifer to rebel against God. However, in the Bible, the book of Job tells us how the devil was able to talk directly with God about Job's faithfulness. Heaven is also depicted differently in the book of Enoch. In the book of Enoch, chapter 14, verse 10 tells us that heaven's groundwork was crystal, but in the Bible, when we look at the book of Revelation, heaven's ground is made of gold. This is only one of many instances where the book of Enoch contradicts the Bible in regards to the description of heaven. Considering all these differences, we can now see why the book of Enoch was unable to be included in the Bible. There are just so many details that do not conform with inspired scripture. In addition to contradicting the Bible, the book of Enoch contains other astrological elements that defy scientific reasoning. According to the book of Enoch, Enoch mapped and counted every star in the sky, while in the Bible, Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 22 claims that stars cannot be numbered. Astronomers believe there are around 100 million stars in the Milky Way alone, in addition to the millions upon millions of other galaxies, making it a physical impossibility to count each star. So how is he even able to see all the stars? Adding to the baffling details in the Book of Enoch is how the moon, wind, snow, and hail emanate from a wooden receptacle in heaven. This can be found in the Book of Enoch chapter 41. This sounds ludicrous and is not only contrary to scripture, but also unscientific and even sounds absurd. Regardless of its exclusion from the Bible, the Book of Enoch has become very popular because of its intriguing details. The Book of Enoch is a layout of all things past, present, and future. From Genesis to the Son of Man Jesus Christ to the secret day of judgment, it is nearly the entire Bible in one book. It is true that the Book of Enoch is interesting and highly debatable, however, it's crucial to remember that the first Book of Enoch is not scripture and was not inspired by God. The book contradicts the Bible multiple times and was mentioned in the apocryphal book of Baruch in several early church copies. In reality, the book of Enoch belongs to the subgenre of texts known as pseudepigrapha. Pseudepigrapha are works with false authorship claims, or texts whose claimed author is not the real author. The book of Enoch mentions Noah, and the Bible says that Enoch was taken to heaven before Noah's time, suggesting that the author is not who he claims to be. Thus, it is much more likely that someone else wrote the book of Enoch and falsely claimed that Enoch was the book of Enoch's original author. As a result, Christians seeking to understand the gospel truths do not place much significance on the book of Enoch. Jude may have included it, however, for several reasons, including the fact that it was well known at the time and because the chapter he cited contained some encouraging truth that supported his argument for the gospel. Enoch's book is shrouded in mystery, and it is unclear if he wrote it himself or if someone else did, drawing inspiration from him. However, one thing is clear, many questions remain unanswered about the book. So there you have it, the telling secrets from the Book of Enoch that reveals our history. 
If you enjoyed this video, watch also the next video on your screen, which looks inside Ethiopia's Science Museum, which is currently the largest museum in Africa. Be sure to give the video a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for more exciting future videos.